Today I'm going to measure the output voltage or flyback voltage of my Bedini motor generator. Okay, here's the front of my Bedini machine. It's a motor generator. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a pulsing motor that generates extra electricity through something called flyback. And I'll explain that in a minute. But first, uh, there's a wheel with hematite magnets spaced evenly around it that rotates. And it rotates in front of a bifilier coil. That's a coil with two separate strands of wire wound side by side on the same core. And uh, I have a rather large core here, so I get a lot of induced voltage. And basically, when this wheel uh, with the magnet on it, when the magnet gets close, swings into this coil, it creates uh, some induced energy through the coil and that turns on a transistor and when this magnet flies past it turns off the transistor so the transistor being turned on and off uh, creates an electromagnet uh, out of this coil which makes the wheel spin and keeps it spinning so that's the motor part the tricky part is it also uh, in energizing this coil and then sharply turning it off uh, a reaction called flyback is initiated uh, when current flows through a coil and then suddenly stops the magnetic field surrounding the wire collapses and creates another brief surge of voltage and I'll explain that with a, a brief animation but first let's measure the induced voltage that just the spinning wheel will give us. I've connected up a meter. It's reading a little energy right now, but that's just leftover energy just hanging out in that coil. But when I spin this, it's generating a little bit of electricity just by spinning past that coil. And that's enough to energize the circuit and make the motor work. So let's go to that animation before I measure the actual flyback, the collapsing of the magnetic field through the run coil. Current through a wire causes a magnetic field. A magnetic field moving across a wire causes current in the wire. When current is cut off sharply through a wire, its magnetic field collapses and causes a brief current flow. Now, as you saw in that animation, when, this, uh, when any electricity goes through a wire, it creates a magnetic field. When the current stops flowing through a wire, the magnetic field collapses. We're going to measure that magnetic field collapse now. Moving to the back of the machine, I have connected up a tiny capacitor. This is a 104Z. It's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. It's just enough. Uh, to slow down the high peaks I'm going to get from flyback so I can measure the voltage. Now I've connected up uh, the leads to that capacitor. The leads are connected on the run coil, on the back of the run coil here. And it's basically the same place where you would uh, put the charge battery. And I've just filed the circuit down and I've isolated uh, my positive with a, a separate diode but basically it's uh, right off the run coil the diode is just to make it go in one direction so I can measure DC voltage and my meter is set up for DC current uh, 100 volt scale so there's three decimal spots there I've already got the uh, battery turned on so all I have to do is start the uh, motor and it starts spinning up and the flyback voltage is cruising. In conclusion, I had to cut that last shot a little short. Actually, my motor burned out on me, despite my precautions. Uh, measuring uh, the flyback is difficult. Uh, the circuit is not meant to be run without the charge battery catch the extra energy, and it did burn out. But as you can see, though, it usually tops out about... Uh, 203 volts and will maintain that. 
So now this is where arguments get started. Uh, it appears with that 200 volt uh, reading that we're getting back more energy than expended. I don't think so. I've been running this thing for weeks and weeks. And uh, from what I see and have logged in by charging batteries, uh, I'm using 100 milliamps at 12 volts to run that motor, which is 1.2 watts of energy. Now that energy surge of 200 volts, uh, I bet if I could measure those amps from those peaks, those 200 volt peaks, I bet it would be 6 milliamps. I bet I'm getting 1.2 watts of energy in, 1.2 out. Uh, however, uh, that is an equal and opposite reaction. And if uh, all electronic devices that use energized coils caught the flyback from that uh, turning on and off a coil, uh, the efficiency would go up very close to 100%. My Bedini motor charges batteries and the amount I expend is about the amount I capture. I can keep changing batteries back and forth for nearly forever and I measure almost zero loss. So uh, capturing flyback and reusing it in circuits is definitely something that needs to be done and our current manufacturers are not doing and I think that is a real shame. I'm sure it's cheaper to make them the way they are now because after all we're paying for the energy. Uh, it's just a shame we could make them a lot more efficient I think. Run out.